So, good morning, dear brothers and sisters, dear friends. Um, welcome to Blue Cliff Monastery. Today we have um, our day of mindfulness after uh, many weeks or months that we've been away. I'm very happy to see all of you. Um, so let us just enjoy being together, enjoy our breathing. Uh, when we listen to the sounds of the bell. Respected teacher, dear Sangha, um, today is April 9th, year 2017, and we are at Blue Cliff Monastery. Um, just curious, how many of us are new today? Okay, wonderful. <laughs> um, and how many come from the university or the college? In Delaware? Oh yeah, okay. I was just wondering if someone show up today too. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here with you all and I'm happy that you are there. And um, how many of you are not familiar with the term mindfulness? Y'all know about mindfulness? Or how many of you have heard mindfulness and tried to practice on your own? Okay. So for some of us, maybe mindfulness practice is still something new. Um, so when you come here, you can uh, see that everyone take their time to breathe, to eat, to walk, even to talk. We talk slower than the outside um, uh, city, society. Um, that's because we learn to come back to ourselves in every moment, if we can, and uh, being fully present to the moment so that we can be fully alive. And we use many tools like um, the sound of the bell, or the chiming of the clock, or the telephone ring, or just even listening to the birds singing, we can just pause and um, take some moment to breathe and smile and enjoy life. Um, so that's basically about mindfulness. I will go further into the details. Today I'm supposed to give a talk to the group of college students. <laughs> Wish uh, a few show up because we have some difficulty with transportation. But anyway, I think my talk is relevant to everyone because it's about how to be free. So 
So I guess um, myself included and all of you might be curious and um, wondering about how to be free, how to live happily, how to live more peacefully. Um, so I just want us to take some time to look deeply into ourselves and um, contemplate um, what are the things that are troubling us lately? Um, what are the things that um, kind of weigh us down and uh, prevent us from being happy, being free? So maybe to look more specifically, um, we can look at time. Um, do we have enough time to live? <laughs> do we have enough time to um, to be with our loved ones? Do we have enough time to enjoy doing the things that we love to do um, for many years or many months? Um, do we have enough time to rest? <laughs> Maybe we've been thinking a lot of pro thinking about a lot of projects and worrying about things in our family, and we may not even have time to rest properly. Um, and what about your career? What about your job? How you been doing with that? Um, In other areas like um, our own emotional states, whether we're in a balanced emotional state or we kind of <laughs> um, not in a good mood, um, and our relationship uh, with our families, with our friends, with our community members. Um, Yeah, and there are other issues like our health, our, um, you know, for young people is the classes they have to take, the career they have to choose. So just pick one, one item that you feel like kind of on your plate right now and you're concerned about it or you do you have trouble? So uh, maybe you just raise your hand and say one thing. Volunteers? Any volunteers? <laughs> yes? Not enough rest. Not enough rest, yeah. Mm. Yes? Work and life balance. Work and life. Work. Yes. Work and life balance. Mm. Yes? Yeah, family and relationship, yes. Yes. Jealousy without meaning to be jealous. Jealousy without any cause for it, yeah. Okay. Just about a few weeks ago, I also have a problem with my health issue. <laughs> and I try to take some medicine, which like kind of bring me up the clouds. <laughs> and I didn't even feel myself. I, I, I felt like um, I'm just up in the air. I couldn't even think about my Dharma talk. <laughs> and I realized that, you know, things happening for a reason, and it helped me to look deeply to see, uh, you know, whether I really need that medicine or not. And uh, when I finally had the courage just to not taking it, I feel so much myself, even though I have so much judgment to do, but I feel so much myself and I feel more clear and um, happier. 
So I just balance my way of, you know, resting, eating, and so on. So I think the art of of stopping, the art of mindfulness, really helped when we have these issues, whether it's family or um, our own health or a career or other issues. Um, So, first of all, freedom is about being present, right? Like we share about mindfulness and being connected. When we are not connected to ourselves, when we are not fully present, whether with ourselves or with uh, our loved ones or with the environment, we can feel very alienated and um, we might not know what to do. Yesterday we have a chance to listen to one of the Venables um, from the Phu Hue Temple in, in Lam Dong, near Dalat. He's one of the Bodhisattva, we call him, or saint, who helped to save many monastics during the time that the communist government in Vietnam chased a group of us out of the temple. And um, there were about 300 to 400 monastics who are very young. They could be from 16 to 30 something. And um, he just took them in with no fear, <laughs> with a lot of compassion. And he just used his hand, not his head, in order to embrace them and take care of them for many months until they find another refuge. So I was very touched to hear his story. Um, I heard it many years ago, but just to hear him say it again yesterday. And yesterday he shared about, you know, we should take our time just to be in nature and just to see how we are connected to nature. And that was something very Zen. (laughs) Yeah, to see what connection we have with nature. Lately, I, I've been observing the little flowers that, are, that we have in our garden. And I think today the little daffodils start to come out. They bloom very beautifully. Um, I think the crocuses came out first. <laughs> and recently in my room also the, um, the orchids starting to bloom little by little. And I'm very happy to see that, to see that spring is finally coming after many months of, uh, of snow and winter here. I was in California a month, a month ago, and I heard that there is still a snowstorm here, which I was so surprised. <laughs> so I'm like the bird that's flying south <laughs> when everyone is having snow. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's beautiful to see nature that are around us. And nature can give us so much nourishment and healing. So when we can connect to nature, we can feel the nourishing elements. And the same when we can connect to someone who's fresh and happy, we can also receive some nourishment um, from them. So Thay has a mantra, um, I'm here for you. So when we can be truly present to the present moment, and we breathe in deeply, we breathe out deeply, we truly present, then we can say, breathing in, I know you are there. Breathing out, I'm here for you. So that's one of the breathing exercises we can do in our daily life when we're sitting somewhere on a bus or in a car or in a train, then we can just come back to ourselves and say, breathing in, I'm here. Uh, Breathing in, I know that I'm here. Breathing out, I'm here for myself. Or you can say, I'm here for you. Um, So for when we have difficulties, whether it's in our, our health or our 
mental state, then we can use uh, the mindful breathing to connect ourselves again. Um, you know, many of the veterans, when they come back from war, it's very hard for them to connect to their body because um, they have so many things going on in their mind that they don't want to touch. So therefore, at the same time, they are disconnected from their body. So usually when we have retreat with veterans, we ask them to be in touch with their body. So we have this exercises like, um, you know, breathing in, I'm aware of this body, breathing out, I smile to this body. And we can be aware of our hands, our feet, our eyes, um, our nose, so on. So that helps us to connect more to the body. And from the body, we can connect to the, um, our emotional states or become mental formations. So when we can connect to ourselves, we can have um, total sovereignty over our kingdom. I think recently the sister invented the word queendom. <laughs> we can have total sovereignty over our queendom <laughs> for the ladies. Um, and that way we can be fully aware of the five territories, which is um, the five skandhas we call in Buddhism. There are the body, the feelings, the mental states, perceptions, and the consciousness. Um, so today I won't go over the Buddhist psychology because uh, of time. But just to share with you that deep inside of you, you have the consciousness. We call store consciousness. And they're like, imagine the garden, the soil, where you keep all the seeds, um, all, the, all the dormant state of your um, state of mind. So when these seeds are being watered, then they come up as something, whether it's anger or jealousy or happiness or joy. Um, depends which one you water. So let's say we were in a conversation and um, there's some argument going on, then it touched the seed of irritation. Then the seed of irritation is being watered and it comes up. So with mindfulness we can um, embrace that state, that plan that come up, and we can either calm it down or we can maintain it. If it's um, a nourishing seed, a happy seed, then we try to keep it as long as possible up there. And if it's something um, that brings us unhappiness, then we try to just lullaby it and calm it down and let it go back to the ground, to the store consciousness and do not let it manifest up in the upper level which is we call mind, mind consciousness. So when we can um, be able to recognize what is going on within us, we can embrace it and help it to transform. Um, so freedom is something not giving to us by anyone. It is something we have, it is something we can cultivate. Um, the Buddha always urged us to go back to ourselves and to, to be our own teacher and to be able to touch the beautiful things that are in us and transform the unwholesome things that are binding us. Um, so in order, in order to cultivate it, we, we need some tools, right? Um, today I want to share a little bit about the five true powers. How many of you have known about the five source of power or the five energies? Yes, Carolyn? You know the first one? I know of him, okay. 
I'm sure some of us here know. <laughs> so the, the one I talk about already is mindfulness. Um, we know we have that in us. So let me just write a few of these down. So the first one of the five powers is um, faith. So faith is about confidence, about trust, about believing in oneself. So the Buddha say, you know, you have this Buddha in you, or maybe Christ would say the same, you have, you have the Christ body in you. Um, so in order to cultivate our uh, practice, we need to have faith. We need to have faith that um, the tools will help us. Um, we have to have faith that it will, it will work, right? <laughs> um, if not, then you cannot start with something. So we need to have faith. The second one is um, diligence. So diligence in Buddhism, it means constant effort. And this doesn't mean that we have to try hard. We have to um, push ourselves off our limit. <laughs> but it means that um, regular, constant effort. Like um, if you have enjoyed sitting meditation and you like to continue that, you don't have to sit like an hour each day, for example. That would be too much. Um, you can try even sitting for five minutes or 15 minutes when you can, even a few times a week. But if you do it regularly, then that's diligence. And recently I just discover a new meaning for diligence. Um, for me, it's something like um, if you do something you enjoy and something that nourishes you and makes you happy, that is diligence, I feel. Because um, if we are trying too hard to get at something or we try to attain something, sometimes we don't get at and we get very disappointed, right? <laughs> so if we can just enjoy what we are doing, but knowing that it will bring us some benefit, then for me, that's true diligence. Um, so the Buddha shared about the four ways of cultivating diligence. As I shared before, it's about um, watering the good seeds that you have inside of you. And the second one is to maintain those good seeds um, and help them to grow every day if possible. And the third one is um, try not to water the negative or unwholesome seeds. Um, or try not to um, have conditions that can water these seeds. Like if you're surrounded by good friends, if you're not in the environment where it can water these seeds, um, then that will help us a lot. But in case that you have to be in the environment where there are people or situations that can cause you difficulties, then we can still to learn to embrace um, that unwholesome seed and help to calm it down. Or another way is um, we can replace the unwholesome seeds with more positive ones. So the third one is mindfulness. And it's not dark enough. <laughs> okay. 
So this I already shared. Um, and the fourth one is concentration. So again, concentration is like um, try to gather things together, um, bring things together, have a focus, have some attention. It's like when you want to cook something, like you want to cook rice or potato, right? We have to be there to wash the fire so it's not like burn the pot. So concentration is like that. We need to be attentive, we need to focus so that things can be ripened. For instance, if you're thinking about how to solve an issue that you have, then you don't just, you know, Google <laughs> and try to ask a question, really. But try to um, look deeply into your heart and then let that problem sit there. Um, and you just be with it when you can, be present. And then a few days after or a week after or longer, you will find the answer. So it's like, um, have you ever tried this? When you, when you see the leaf down in the bottom of the pond and you want to get it up, uh, how did you get it to go up to the surface? Anyone know? Yes? Yes, yeah, stir the pond, right? So it's like that. We stirring it slowly and then the current would just pick the leaf up to the top, right? You don't have to try so much. So it's like that. Concentration is something when you give it enough attention and focus and you let it go, you let it be, then it will come. So when we have enough concentration, then we can cultivate insight, which is the fifth power. So, insight is like wisdom. Um, it helps us to know what we should do in a situation. Um, like this Dhamma talk, I didn't think too hard of it. <laughs> I just enjoy myself. And I enjoy the practice. I allow myself to rest. I spend time with my sisters and brothers. And I take it very easy. I didn't even worry last night. I slept very well. <laughs> and uh, this morning, I didn't even look at my talk. I just let it be there. Um, when you have enough space inside, when you have enough um, trust, then things will happen, you know. Um, sometimes we're planning too hard or sometimes we're thinking too much, then that can make us even worry more and uh, it's harder to concentrate and to have insight. Um, they say that um, sleep is one of the magical power. <laughs> They say that if you can sleep well, then um, it helps to balance our emotional state. It's like um, the mind is doing the cleaning up, you know, at like when we eat and after that we wash our dishes, right? We clean up the kitchen and everything. So it's like that. The mind, when we go to rest, when we go to bed, the mind just clean up itself and rearranging and tidying and do whatever it needs to do that help us to be balanced again. So um, when we don't have enough rest, then, you know, things can be still there. It's, un it's not um, cleaning up. So if we can just get some sleep at night, then that can help us a lot. They say the best time 
I mean, the minimal time we should sleep is at least from 11 <laughs> p.m. until like 3 or 5 a.m. Um, if you just get the first four hours of sleep, then at least you're in good term. But if we skip all that, then our body will need longer time to recharge. I just remember during, during the Vietnamese New Year, we stayed up late a lot. <laughs> We stay up late, especially to make the, this earth cake, traditional Vietnamese earth cake, which we cook for like 12 hours or longer. So we have to keep pouring water into the pot and cooking the, the cake that is kind of thick with sticky rice and with lots of banana leaves. And we have tons of them, like hundreds of them inside uh, the pot. So. Every year, I, s I observed that, you know, after the new year, the Sangha took at least a few weeks or a month to rest. <laughs> because just because we stay up late that whole night, you know, watching the cake and having so much fun, you know, drinking tea and being together. So, um, you know, rest is very important for us. Uh, if we can get enough rest, if we cannot rest at night, then at least take some nap in the day. Because um, that will help us to balance our mind. The recent month, last month, I just took the liberty to just rest. <laughs> I, um, I rest until like 7 or 8 in the morning. And I just feel like my, dog, my body just needs that. And if I meditate, then I meditate somewhere in the day. Because I feel like um, my body is not resting enough. I've been, you know, waking up early and doing many things. So I feel like when I can just rest, it helps me to balance a lot in my body and mind. So try to get some rest. <laughs> So let us enjoy one sound of bell. Drinking this water, I just remember um, yesterday I saw a traveler on um, the new movie that's will coming out soon. It's called Walk With Me. This is um, a movie about our teacher and about the practice of mindfulness. Um, I don't know what month it will come out, but uh, I saw the trailer. And in this trailer, our teacher has a question and answers with the children. And one of the girls, she came up and she asked, um, well, my, my dog died yesterday and I feel very sad about it. And how do I practice to be with that? So Thay say, um, yeah, try to see that your dog has become the cloud up there. <laughs> And uh, one day, when the condition is sufficient, it will rain, and then the rain becomes the water. So, when we are in touch with the water, we can be in touch with our loved ones. And the girl was just smiling so <laughs> bright when she hear that. I think children, they can understand very simple terms. They don't need complicated, you know, Zen <laughs> teachings. It's very beautiful. Um, 
Yeah, and so freedom also comes from the art of letting go, come from the spaciousness. Um, I think everyone knows that in order to in order to um, create new things, we need some space. Like if we have, if we want to have new ideas, we need to let go of the old ideas in order to have something new in us. Um, especially for me, when I when I want to write poem or when I want to create art, then um, I try to just let my mind be more like spacious. <laughs> take a walk or be in nature and um, allow the poem to come, allow the art to come. Um, recently, Dan Dan, she is from Hong Kong. Um, she's sitting right here. <laughs> uh, she's been inviting me to try this new kind of Qigong exercise. And uh, I like it very much, especially the part where they just shake, shake, shake. <laughs> And um, yeah, I feel after each movement, usually in um, yoga or tai chi, either we take some breath after that and we start a new one, or we just let things go, <laughs> we shake it off before we start the new movement. And I found that so helpful because um, oftentimes we, we felt that we have to do it continuously, you know, keep doing things um, in order to get somewhere. But actually, if we just stop and shake it out or have some space, then that gives us more space to go forward. Um, so, the Buddha taught about the four ways of letting go, but I'm just going to share about one. So, um, there's a term it means that when we can let go, then happiness will born, will be born. Um, so happiness from letting go. For me, letting go has many, many um, connotations. Uh, one letting go is letting go of notions. So we have notions about um, the self, first of all, ngã, and then the second one is notion about human beings. Um, the third one is notions about living beings, maybe in this case, non-living beings, um, the earth, for instance. And the fourth idea that we need to let go is um, the lifespan. So. Um, you know, humans have a lot of ideas about themselves, right? Um, and it all comes from the ego. It all comes from the way humans look at their own self. And then from there, they think everything is centered around them. <laughs> but, of course, when you go back to um, history, when you go back to science, you see that Human beings are actually the very young um, species that just come later, even become after the little cells. <laughs> so, you know, to think that we are like on top of the universe and, you know, everything has to be evolved around us, that's also one of the wrong notions about uh, human beings. And even the idea of ourselves, we can have many ideas that um, Maybe it doesn't bring us happiness. Um, when we feel that we are isolate, we are independent, we are not connecting to our loved ones or our society, then um, that can bring us a lot of suffering. Um, I have a brother who has some, some case of depression and he has been try, trying to um, stabilized through rehab and so on. And then he's getting better and better, so they finally let him stay in a rental home and things like that. 
recently he asked to move back to my parents' house. Um, and he interact more with, with us. And, um, and now with my parents, you know, they're over 80s right now, so my dad cannot drive. So he has to drive and sometimes to go shopping for them. So it just helped him to get out of his depression and uh, be more normal again. It's because he was able to connect. He was able to establish that link again with people and with things. So um, I think that when we can let go of the idea of the self, you know, that we are this separate beings and we have all this unhappiness and suffering, that we are larger than that and that we can have support from our families, our friends and our community, then it helps us to get out of that <laughs> and not feel like we are this tiny self. Um, yeah, and living beings and the earth, of course we know all about that because, um, you know, the idea people have about the earth, about climate, about environment. Um, it's important when we see that we have a connection and same with the lifespan. Um, you know, the lifespan is limitless. We are not we are not just this body in this lifetime, but we are a continuation of our ancestors, and we will continue on. When our teacher um, was not ill yet, he, he just recently got a stroke about a few years ago, but before that, he already prepared himself, and he shared with the community, you know, all the practices of mindfulness, and all the things that he wanted to transmit to us. And he said that if one day I'm not here, I know that I'm continuing in you. So when he falls sick, we feel very at ease and very safe because we know that we can continue him. So there was not a panic in the community. And up to now, um, we feel um, very much you know, happy that he's still alive, but also we are happy to continue him. And you are also his continuation when you're able to practice um, some of the elements of mindfulness. And so letting go also about letting go of our notions of happiness. Sometimes we have um, ideas about what happiness should be, and um, that prevents us from being happy. It's quite erroneous, but <laughs> When we have ideas about it, then we cannot be happy. Um, have you ever thought of that? Your ideas of happiness? Yeah. I heard that in many of the um, what we call um, progressive countries, um, people have many dreams. In Singapore, they call it the big, uh, the five big C. So you know, these are the ideas of happiness. So one of the C is credit cards, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is to have a car, and the next C is condominium, to have a house, and uh, what's the other C? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, cash. <laughs> and uh, club members. Um, so, you know, people believe, especially the young lady, some young ladies, they believe that to have a good spouse or a good partner, they have to have the five C's first. <laughs> so it's very challenging for the young men over there. They have to really try to work very hard. Um, so, you know, those are just ideas, right? Even if people have all these things, they cannot be truly happy. If they don't have time to live, if they don't have time to breathe, to smile, to relax, then no way they can be happy. 
They say that happiness is now or never. <laughs> so if you want to be happy, you can choose your happiness now. We have um, one of the um, Vietnamese artists in Vietnam. His name is Tin Kong Shen. And he wrote the song, Each day I choose one happiness. Um, I choose the flowers, I choose the smile. I choose to come to my friends, to my brothers and sisters. Um, I choose the falling leaves. So it's what you can choose that make you happy in the day. You don't have to look for far. You don't, ha you don't have to look far away. It's just right in front of you. Um, you know, when our teacher was just recovering from the stroke, one of the things he said was, thank you. Thank you. Happy, so happy. Because he was so happy that he could be alive after that stroke. And um, he was able to help many help from doctors and from friends from all over the world who sent peace and love to him. And so the moment he was able to open his eyes and to see all his beloved students, he was so happy. And that's the first thing he uttered was, thank you, so happy. So I feel like even Thay in his, um, in his ill health, he can still touch that element of happiness and he can still find joy in the little things. And we know that to talk about happiness doesn't mean that you always need to be happy because there are times when your emotions, when your negative emotion can come up. So it's a time for us to just embrace and take care of that because we know that without the mud, we don't, we cannot, sorry, without the mud, we cannot cultivate the lotus. Um, if you see the lotus pond we have in front of this hall, it's full of like mud right now. But in the summer, you will see the beautiful lotuses that will come up. And thanks to the mud that these lotuses can grow. So without suffering, we cannot cultivate our happiness. Without suffering, we cannot understand and to love. Um, I think people who have suffered the most, and if they find the practice, they can become the happiest person. <laughs> so um, even if you have some trouble right now, some concern, but you know they are the tools that can help you to find your happiness. Okay, I have one last item. Is freedom is about... Freedom is wherever you go. Um, they have a book called um, be free where you are. Yeah. This tiny book is um, a manual for the um, prisoners to practice. Um, I think Thay had came to the prisons and shared some teachings to the in inmates. And, um, and after that, he wrote this book about how to practice in a prison. And it's not only for people who are in prison, it's actually for all of us, um, so that we can take this freedom wherever we go. Um, so, um, if you're here for the first time, or if you've been here, continue to nourish your practice, your daily practice of mindfulness. Um, you can be flexible and creative in how you practice and um, you can enjoy the fruit of practice. And when your practice can inspire yourself or inspire your family members and your friends, then you can share it to a wider circle. And just to know that we are always here for you and we have the support for you. So whenever you need us, just come back. Um, yeah, you can come here regularly Every, every weekend or every um, day of mindfulness in order to nourish your practice or even just once a month or whenever you can come, that's wonderful. 
So thank you so much for being here and for supporting my, my sharing. And I hope you enjoy this beautiful day of spring. Thank you.